when the iPad Pro Magic Keyboard came out, I was really excited. I've wanted a keyboard case for my iPad ever since I got it, but there were always too many downsides, like the Apple ones. The keys weren't very mechanical, and they only had two viewing angles. And there were other options out there, but none of them really fit the exact needs that I was looking for. So when I saw the commercial for the Magic Keyboard, I was really excited because for one, it just looks really cool. And for two, it fit all the exact needs that I was looking for for a keyboard case for my iPad. I was really excited, that is, until I saw the price tag. I have the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, so the Magic Keyboard case for me is $350. But after arguing with myself for several hours over whether I should buy it or not, I finally broke and decided to order my Magic Keyboard case. When I ordered it, Apple had such a big back order on, on this case, it took about a month for Apple to send it over. And I finally got it a couple weeks ago, and I've been using it, and I'm ready to share my thoughts. For anyone that doesn't know about this case, it has a two-point hinge system. So it folds up about halfway, and then the rest of the way is on a second hinge, which makes the bottom look like it's kind of floating over the keyboard. The iPad connects to the case using the three pins in the back, so you don't have to worry about connecting to Bluetooth or charging the case. It all works directly through the iPad. You just put it on and they work. The Magic Keyboard case comes with a trackpad and backlit keys, and on the back there is a camera hole for the 2020 iPad with the big square camera bump. So let's talk about the hinge for a second. As I said before, the case folds up part way and then the rest of the way is on a second hinge that makes the bottom of the iPad kind of come out and look like it's floating. And I think Apple did this for a couple reasons. For one, it holds the iPad really close to the user, so it's really easy to just reach up and use the touch screen because above all else, the iPad Pro is still a touch-oriented device. It also makes the iPad really easy to take off the case. If I wanna take it off and draw or whatever, I can just grab it from the bottom and pull it right off the case and it's no problem. But I think the main reason they did this two hinge system is actually for balance. With a normal computer, all the internals are in the bottom under the keyboard and the top half is just a monitor. But with the iPad, all the internals and hardware are in the iPad itself, which makes it really top heavy when it's in this case. So having the hinge fold in this way gives it some counterbalance so they could fold it back, so you can fold it back a little bit farther than if it didn't fold like this. That said, the iPad can't fold back all the way, which is a little annoying sometimes, but I found that it folds back just far enough that I can use it in pretty much any situation. It actually folds back just about as far as a MacBook. So let's talk about the keys. As I mentioned earlier, the keys are backlit, so typing in the dark is no problem. The keys aren't super mechanical or super clicky, but I found that it's kind of a happy medium between the old keyboard cases, which you almost didn't feel at all, and a normal mechanical keyboard. They're clicky enough that I can feel them when I'm typing, but they're also thin enough that they don't get in my way. And for some reason, people make a big deal about the inverted T arrow keys. Um, before, the side arrow keys were bigger, so they filled up the entire space next to the up and down arrows. Apparently, a lot of people like the inverted T more, uh, but for me, it doesn't really matter. I can't really tell the difference. Now, onto the touchpad. If you look at this case, you can see that there isn't much room for the keyboard and touchpad because the iPad, when it folds out, it actually takes up some of the space on the bottom. So that they had to make the touchpad kind of small. With the small trackpad and the normal tracking settings, it's a little annoying to try and get the mouse all the way across the screen. So in settings, I changed the mouse speed to the fastest setting, and now it's not really a problem. I haven't seen a lot of people talking about this, but one thing I love about this case is I actually think it makes the iPad more portable. The case is actually more heavy than the iPad itself, and it's almost twice as thick so with the, with the case on, it's almost like carrying around two iPads. So how does that make it more portable? Well, the case does make the iPad heavier and it takes up more space, 
I found that with this case on, the iPad feels a lot more durable and sturdy, so I feel a lot more comfortable putting it in a laptop case or a backpack. One problem I've heard people talk about with this case is that it drains battery really fast, and I have noticed that my iPad does take a hit in battery life when I'm using this case, but so far it hasn't been to the point where it's been a problem. I've always had a charger nearby by the time I need it, but obviously I've been home a lot more recently, so maybe when I'm traveling more, it might become more of a problem. Overall, I have to say I do not regret getting this case. I really like it, and I think it adds a lot of value to my iPad. It was just so easy to, right out of the box, connect it to my iPad and start working. I think it made my setup a lot more portable. Before I got the case, I was using an old Magic Keyboard with my iPad, but that wasn't very portable, and I would have problems connecting with the Bluetooth, so this case was a huge upgrade. <laughs> So despite the hefty price tag, I definitely don't regret buying this case, but that said, I have a really hard time recommending it. I think the Magic Keyboard case is a really quality product, the experience is good, and it looks great, and I think it adds a whole new dimension to the iPad Pro experience. But it is a really expensive accessory, and I don't think it's completely necessary. So if you have an iPad Pro and you're looking for the best experience possible, I would say go for it, but if you don't want to spend a huge price tag, there are a bunch of third-party options that are much more reasonably priced. So those are my thoughts on the iPad Pro Magic Keyboard case. I hope that if you're looking to buy one, this helped you make a decision. But with that said, thank you all for watching. Um, if you want to see more of me, uh, please subscribe and hit the bell, and I will see you all in the next video. Uh, have a good day.